Hey, thanks for checking out Vinyl and Hops, episode 15, brought to you by Live on Tape Delay. Check them out over at lotdpodcast.com. Today we're going to talk to you about some beer and records, as we've done for the previous 14 episodes. Let's just keep the train rolling. What are we drinking today? Uh, since the Rockets are in the playoffs, and by the time this comes out, the worst case scenario is they might be, they're either... Worst case scenario, they'll be down 3-1. Best case scenario, they'll be up 3-1. So we have uh, Brewston from 8th Wonder, which is their uh, pale ale. Um, but it's, in their words, it embodies the city of Houston because it's well, well-rounded, easygoing, and full of flavor. And I agree with that. How is this different than Hopston? I believe Hopston is more of an IPA, where this is more of just a pale ale. Gotcha. So it's a little bit less malty and less hoppy. It's a little bit easier to drink. But I, it's probably, if I had to guess, it would be very similar malt bill and very similar hops in the two. Maybe just different levels of them. Hmm. I would guess this would probably be less alcohol too, just because it's the pale ale. 5.8? 5.8. I don't know what Hopston is off the top of my head. I don't know. Also, 45 IBUs. Uh, I'm pretty confident Hobson has more yeah. IBUs than that. But uh, I like to uh, hit these guys up prior to checking out a Dynamo match. So it's yeah. pretty close. It's within walking distance if you're ever in the area. You can park there, go into the brewery for $15, get a glass and three beers, and then go to the Dynamo game. Or Astros game, either one. Also right. within walking distance. If you're really stretching your legs, you could walk to the Rockets game as well. Yeah, sure. Show centers a little bit further, but you, you could technically do that. So let's dive into some records. Uh, let's start off with the album that I picked up a couple weeks ago, courtesy of Sound Revolution in Houston. I have got Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk by Emperor. This is, I believe, their second studio album, released in 1997. So that is uh, 20 years ago. Damn. I own this on CD. I probably owned it on CD since it came out. Uh, one of my first kind of uh, forays into black metal. Um, pretty sweet looking uh, pressing. Very nice uh, dark green color, which is cool. It uh, works for black metal, I think. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's black metal. It's um, good black metal. I mean, you know, of course, Isan that um, has released f three, four, five solo albums uh, since leaving Emperor that are all pretty much amazing, except maybe one of them. Um, and I realize I was the same person. Yeah, hmm. yep. So, um, Isan's the vocalist and guitar player for Emperor, or one of the one of the guitar players. I've never seen them live. Um, I know they had done some reunion shows, and it wasn't anywhere close to me, unfortunately. Um, not my favorite Emperor album. I do like the two that came after this. Ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. It, it's it's a classic, like right from the get go, right from the second the needle goes down. It, um, it's just a black metal masterpiece, I think. Uh, so if you're looking to get into black metal uh, and you, you want some, some good stuff to start off with, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. All good songs. Nothing really bad on here. Loss and Curse of Reverence is a really good one. Yeah, and I believe on a recent um, episode of Decibel, magazine. This was the Hall of Fame uh, entry and uh, they just kind of talked to the band members about the recording process and what that all looked like kind of back in the day. So that's really cool. You can probably pick that up at, uh, I don't know, Decibel's website. So just Google Decibel magazine and uh, go check out their back issues and pick one up. It might even come with a flexi. So there you go. What do you got? All right, well, I have one laying here, but I'm um, save that for a later episode. I'm going to throw a curveball in here because I know how much Rob loves this band. Nickelback. I think this might be even better than that. Oh, all right. <laughs> Journey. I bought this in college. I'm going to preface it with that. Preface, preface. I always have that question every 
every episode on Live on Tape Delay where I try to say that word, I say it a different way. But um, so I bought this in college where, you know, you do weird things in college. Uh, and I happen to still have this vinyl from there, and it is... So this is when you were experimenting? Oh, God. Yes, this is when I was experimenting. <laughs> Mumford & Sons, Sigh No More. Now I'm gonna keep sighing. <laughs> I don't know, Tim Tebow just... When I was in college, Tim Tebow really, with this record... I don't know, it caught my ear. I he saw liked it. it? I did like it. No, he liked it? Tim no, Tebow liked no, it? No, no, the lead singer looks like Tim Tebow. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess it's Mumford, I don't know. I don't know what their names <laughs> I don't are. I know which one's the son. <laughs> I don't either. Which one, I don't know which one's Mumford or which one's the son, but uh, Tim Te the singer looks like Tim Tebow, in my opinion. He didn't do a whole lot of Tebowing, but um, th this album has some catchy songs on it. I mean, it really does. Uh, Little Lion Man is very catchy. Wake My Soul is catchy. Um, I don't know. It's just simple, easy, crappy American folk type music. That's the problem. And the, <laughs> and the problem isn't necessarily Mumford & Sons. It's that somehow it got so goddamn popular and is on every modern rock station for what reason I have no idea. They're like a poor man's Fleet Foxes who are a thousand times better than them. Um, and many other like legitimate, credible kind of indie folk bands that um, were actually doing it well until they kind of popularized it and ruined kind of ruined it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're, if they didn't do that, I'm sure they'd be fine. But they're, they're kind of like the good Charlotte of yeah. Uh, that folky indie sound. Yeah. The, what Good Charlotte did to pop punk, Mumford and Sons did to. There were just all of a sudden a lot of people that were like, oh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm into indie. What, oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm really into Mumford and Sons. And you're like, get the fuck out of here. Mumford and Sons. And what was the one? The Wagon Wheel people? Old Crow, Old Crow Medicine Show? Oh, I don't like, know. Like, those were the two that they knew. And then Darius Rucker did a cover of Wagon Wheel and that kind of. Spiraled. At least I have respect game. for Darius Rucker. <laughs> because of Hootie and the Blowfish? Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> Everybody loves Hootie and the Blowfish. I don't know how you can not like Hootie. He's also a Miami Dolphins fan. That's right. That's a bonus points. Mm. Some bonus points, a bonus point, something, I don't know. Mm. Dolphins don't get many of those because um, they make you cry. Uh, Is that their first album? This was their first album. So this was... The, this, tell you after, I would assume then that has to be their best. Because yes. The second album was much worse than this one. This one was still... They, they hadn't been completely uh, mainstream, mainstreamified. Main <laughs> mainstreamed? <laughs> mainstreamed. <laughs> there was still a hint of indie to this album, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, definitely after all the tours and uh, the trades from the Broncos to whatever other teams Tim Tebow played for, now they're just kind of... I don't even know. If, are they still a band? I honestly can't tell you. I don't know. No. I mean, uh, and let me say this. like, Good on them for making money. I mean, we all want to make money. That doesn't mean I'm going to like it, though. So, <laughs> you can uh, you can tell me it's good, but I'm somebody that's going to go out and search for... I mean, you don't know how many people I'm meeting or, you know, just having discussions with about music that are in their 30s that have just lost, like, no... I understand, life's busy and you can't spend 10 hours surfing, you know, blogs for bands all day, unless you're me, then you can't, um, you know, look, it's in the way, and you just start listening to whatever's on the radio, and then they say, hey, here's this great new song, and you're like, must be a great new song, and then before you know it, you own Mumford and Sons of Vinyl. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I don't know, just, there's a lot of good music out there. I mean, I'm the same person, person, yeah, person that goes back and says, you know, oh, I love all the old classic stuff, which I do, but there are bands doing current, that are pushing the boundaries, or trying new things, or actually putting out good records, and hopefully we can talk about a little bit. It seems like what I'm talking about is super mainstream to me, even though you may not know who Emperor is, I don't know, um, or any of the records I've talked about, but uh, yeah. And the episode of Live on Tape Delay, I guess it'll be what, 110? Yeah. It'll be 110 will be us really diving into modern metal bands that have album. Not uh, modern so metal. metal. Not modern metal. And not necessarily modern bands. It could be metal bands that have been around for a long time. But it's going to be albums that have come out in the first part of 2017 that we're going to dive deep into and share some. We're, we're going to learn you something. Yeah, because here's what happens. 
they started putting out all the best of lists around December. I forgot all the albums that came out in January and February that I was cranking by then. So we're just going to stop right here. We're going to take stock of what has come out. We're going to talk about it, what we like. Mostly what we like, not too much about what we don't like because why waste our time talking about that. So yeah, check that out. LOTDpodcast.com Search Live on Tape Delay on iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher, Cast Crunch, basically anywhere you can find podcasts. That's it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. We appreciate it. We'll see you. Peace.